Because when when you grow up here, you are trained. When I tell you trained, I tell people this and that's so shocked. You are trained on how to be a wife. You you're trained. Like every girl you see here walking. Of course, my generation, not with this Gen Z, because Gen Z is a bit different. With my generation, you are trained on how to be a good wife. There's a so you know how people have like summer school? We have a thing here called it's Sagati. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah, I want to feel so aligned. How do you think Western culture has shaped the... I guess dating scene or the, the the relationship between men and women in Uganda. Hmm. Uh. Well, you know, I do work for Kenganda, the YouTube channel, right? Mm -hmm. So most of the comments I get to see on the channel when we have like relationship topics and whatnot, most of the comments, uh, most of our audience is like African American, but most of the comments I see is, "Oh, Janita is so Westernized," you know. Mm. Like, oh, the way you think, the way she's thinking, she's so westernized. You know, like, I think most people would expect Ugandans or Africans to be more traditional in the way they do the relationship thing, you know. The usual, wife, submissive, what no one says nothing and what not. But I think the Western culture has definitely affected us because whether we like it or not, we have girls who can't sieve out what they see. I don't know if that makes sense, you know. There's a lot on social media, so some girls can't, like, say, or oh, maybe I'll take this part of social media and deal with it, or I'll take that part and not deal with it, you know? So if you see the girls getting the Birkin bags, you know, getting the cars and whatnot, you're like, oh, okay, it's like, okay, now this is what I want, you know, like, my man has to be able to do this, do that, do this, do this, do that, you know? So that definitely has affected, that's in a way has affected how some girls, um, how the culture, how the Western culture has, you know, affected that dating life. Should I say that? Yeah. Yeah. How it has affected that dating life. And whether whether we like it or not, we are bound to be influenced by it. You know, we are bound to start doing what we see. You know, personally, I I feel like the Western culture has given me a voice. You know, like I can speak my mind freely in a relationship. If something is not right, I'll say it as it is. You know, maybe some people say, oh, it's because you watch, you see a lot of black women, no offense, where where I am, maybe to us. Sometimes we'll see as black black women in the U.S. being loud and, you know, and all that. You know, the usual stereotypes, right? Yeah. And then sometimes when you're in a relationship with someone, it's like, oh, you're watching, you're being too westernized or you're influenced. So that's why you're able to talk back to me. But to me personally, it has had a positive impact on me. So have you heard the term S-Y-S-B-M? It's like an acronym. No, S-Y-S-B-M. So, it, it stands for Save Yourself Black Man. No, I've actually so, not. Yeah, so the movement, It's mm -hmm. uh, if you put in like hashtag S-Y-S-B-M, you'll see some videos on YouTube, but the movement is about the idea that instead of black men in the United States tolerating the, <laughs> the, the issues, the problems that come along with black American women, that you should go to Asia, you should go to um, South American countries, you should go to African countries, Uganda being one of them. Mm -hmm. So as somebody in Africa, somebody in Uganda, what are your... What, what is your immediate thought when you think about mm. a man who's leaving his country because his women are unruly to come mm. to your country because the idea is you guys are more docile, you guys are more agreeable? Mm. First of all, it's very unfair. I think I definitely think it's unfair. I think it's not OK. Like already you coming to Africa. Let me just stick to Uganda because I can only speak for my country people. Already you coming to Uganda to like find someone who is, what's the word, more diluted, 
should I say, I think, yeah, the word would be you want to find someone who's more diluted to fit the standard of the woman you want to be. Already shows that you have a problem, you know, like if you can't deal with your own people, what makes you think you're going to thrive in a whole other different country and a different culture and a different way of doing things, you know? And I think it's unfair to the girls because now it's like after eating and you have leftovers and you you give your leftovers to the dog, right? In a sense, it's like that. You're mm. like, oh, I've dealt with the women in my country, so now let me deal with, you know, let me give some leftovers to the women in African countries, you know. It's all right. And they'll come here and get shocked because people are also empowered. The women here are also empowered. You're <laughs> going to get here with your stupidity. If your stupidity didn't work the other side, trust, how is it going to work this, this side, you know? And then one thing they also... I think need to und- I think the black men need to understand is for Ugandan women, Ugandan women have mastered the art of being a good woman. I don't know if that makes sense. Ugandan it's, women. I think I know what you're saying, but try yeah. to break that down. You mean the the act of being a good woman? As in like the, <laughs> right. the, the, the costume of being yes. a good woman. Okay, talk yes. about that. Because when, when you grow up here, you are trained. When I tell you trained, I tell people this and they're so shocked. You are trained on how to be a wife. You, you're you trained. Like every girl you see here walking. Of course, my generation, not with this Gen Z, because Gen Z is a bit different. With my generation, you are trained on how to be a good wife. There's a... So you know how people have like summer school? We have a thing here called it's Sagati. You know, it's like... No summer school, but it's like where your parents could send you so you can like get additional skills, you mm. know, on how to be a better wife, on how to just be good to your husband, yeah, and whatnot. So all that, all that is information. These girls are it's like a boarding school, just training women to go out there and just collect whatever it is they can collect. So you can come here thinking you've made it in life, and you land on a humble woman and whatnot, forgetting the whole time she's just working you, you know. You can't know if she's doing this for sure or if she's actually being genuinely nice because every, I feel like most of us here have, have been trained on how to be a very, very good wife. So, yeah. you know, that that's a conversation I have a lot, actually. And hmm. even here, it's not as... Uh, it's not as obvious as somebody going to school to learn how to be a good wife, but women in general, I feel like you guys know how to play certain roles to get what you want. So from your perspective, as somebody who's been trained (laughs) to be a good wife, how can somebody tell the difference? How can you differentiate the ones who are playing you versus the ones who actually, actually like you? You can't. (laughs) <laughs> you can't you just have to pray for the spirit of discernment from the lord to Jesus help you because Christ. when i tell you the girl like I, I personally will see some things and i'm like what she's being so good it's like she's ticking all the boxes she knows what to do she knows what where to step she knows where what uh, what to say she knows what to do she knows at what time like she knows a man's peak times to ask for things and a man's downtime to like let him be you know give him his space with his boys and whatnot which is not a bad thing because like the training at the end of the day benefits both parties you can't tell you can't tell unless she may sleep up but that's not a well-trained girl because if she was well trained she wouldn't sleep up she may sleep up she may not so you just have to you just have to i don't know so so what 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 are the dangers of Mm -hmm. A girl who is doing this for a show or doing this because it's her training. What what are the mm. dangers from a from a male point of view? What do you think mm. are some negatives? Yeah, I think some negatives would be your first of all. I don't think that. Let's first talk about the positives because as a man, you're going to enjoy. This is what they're running away from. They want more submissive women, and they're going to find a submissive woman to the T. You understand? Mm. They're going to find a lady who's going to do everything that he's telling them, who's going to listen, who's going to talk to them, and so much more. But the negative would be your money. You are going to part with your money, and you're going to part with it happily. Is that a bad thing? Or is that a good thing? That's up to the parties involved. But it's definitely your money. And then it also plays with your mentor, because you're like, if this person was able to pretend, like, who can I trust, you know? 
But that's if you ever find out she was pretending. Yeah. Chai, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, so while while I'm, you know, talking yeah. to you, I'm thinking to myself, like, for some guys, that might be okay. Because some guys yeah. might say that, you know, the, the American women are, are parting with my money already. So uh-huh. I would rather get something in return. I would rather mm. be compensated by this submission and this, you know, the cooking yeah. and the sex and all that good stuff. Everything. So, like, one of the things that comes to mind, um, I hear in certain African countries there is a wave of paternity fraud. Some mm. Some men... Later in life of finding out that their children are not their children. Mm. Is that a reality that you're seeing? Is that uh, one of the consequences of your woman not necessarily loving you for real? Mm, that, 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 that's not my reality. That's not something I've seen. If it happens, it's like one in a million. It's not because like with Africans... The kid has to come out looking like one of you. I'm sorry, but like that's how most people tell their kids. Like it has to look like one of you at the end of the day, you know. So I don't think that's my reality. I've not seen it happen. I've seen it maybe happen once, but the lady kept quiet about it until he died. So, right, and that's that's yeah. the that's the thing with uh, paternity fraud because sometimes you'll never find out. You'll never yeah. find out until the woman dies. Like, I find. Exactly. Like I've seen a story where the only reason the guy found out was well, mm. not even the father never found out. The mm. son was trying to bring his siblings to the United States mm. and his father to the United States. And it required a DNA test. And that's mm. when they found out that. And the son was like 36 years old. He's not a small boy. He found out that he was not linked to the father. His siblings yeah. were not linked to the father. So a lot of these, you know, African culture, we bury things yeah. under the rug. So a lot of these things might, and that, that was my point, it might mm. be a consequence of your wife pretending to love you. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So, okay, yeah. so let, let, let's, let's talk about submission. Mm. Whenever I say the word submission to American mm. women, there tends mm. to be like a reaction. I see a look on their face and see some exactly some hesitation. What Mm -hmm. is your relationship? What is the African woman's relationship with submission? Mm. Uh, Personally, I I believe I feel like submission is a big word, even though I didn't react to it. Submission to me is more about collaborating and compromising together as partners. I feel like you all have to meet halfway. To me, that would be submission. Although Technically, submission would be you just, you know, blindly following your husband because he is the leader in the household, right? So you have to follow him and do whatever it is that he says. When you come to Africa, submission is 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 there. You know, it's like the girls are submissive. The girls follow their man. The girls will listen to their man. Girls, I've I've heard a friend um, stop school because her man said. Uh, it was attracting a lot of gentlemen to her, which didn't make sense because like, it's, a, it's a university, there are men and women, so obviously she has to interact with them. What is she going to do, hide? Yeah, but you see that level of submission, like whatever my man says, it's the truth because this is my husband. Or even this is like my husband to be, like it may sound dumb, but that people actually take it so serious so submission in africa or uganda to be exact is a big thing it's followed to the t okay it's followed to the t what your man says goes we have some people who rebel here and there there's some tribes who are known to rebel here and there but that's just about it you can't stay married if you're not submissive how do you feel about it personally (laughs) Uh, uh, since, I think, since, since you're more westernized, you're more I, modern, you know, how do you yeah. feel about it? I feel like it's a tool that men have used to get away with so much, in my opinion, in my reality. Um, when you say Africans, well, initially you see men beat their women, you know, domestic violence. And that was like a normal thing. It's like, oh, what did you do? You know, you have to be submissive to your man. He said this, maybe you didn't feel up to it, but, oh, you should have taken one for the team. You should have done it either way, even if you're not fine with it, you understand? Or, like, speaking up when your husband is, like, talking up. You know, most fathers actually dictate, dictate um, where that 
child goes to school, you know, what the child ends up doing, what course they take and all that. So the woman, even if you know your child very well and you want to speak up for them, you would not do that, you know. So it's definite. To me, I feel like submission has been used as a tool, but I am all for compromising and collaborating with my partner, you know. At the end of the day, I understand that a man is a man. It will never be 50-50, you know. That's the difference between Africa and the Western world. It will never be 50-50, like, no one, because no one should lie to us. Like, for me, like, it's not it's not going to be 50-50 in my home, you know. Like, I can't expect my man to come and maybe wash dishes and help out, you know. Let let mm. him work. Let him make the money. Let him work. I'll do, I'll do that chores where I need be. And in Africa, house help is very affordable. You know, that's the thing I think you people miss out. Because in Africa, house help is very affordable. Because I'm a single person at this point stage of my life and I still have house help because I don't want to stress myself with that. I have better <laughs> things to put my energy to. You understand? So I know even if I'm to get married, I'll still have house help because that's that's the standard I've set up for myself. And that's the standard I hope my husband also um, adheres to. So submission, a big word for me, but I'm all for collaborating and compromising and working together as a team, you know, communicating and all that. So it, it begs the question, do you want mm. a more traditional man or a modern mm. man? Hmm. If you if no. you if you had the pick of the litter, if you had two very handsome, very everything, light skin, chocolate, whatever yeah. you like. Yeah. And one was traditional, one was modern. And that was the only difference between them. Who would you mm. pick? I think I would pick a modern man. I want to add in with a sprinkle of some traditional somewhere. I, but I'll definitely pick a modern man because your traditional the, the, in, is different from what I know as traditional, you know? Explain. Because like me, when you say a traditional man, I'll look back to men who had all the authority in the, in the household, what they said went, men who were beating up the women, men who are bringing in other women into the household, you know, like having other wives without consulting the first wife, even when they were not Muslim, even when they were Christian, you know, that's traditional to me. Men who are stuck in their ways, who are, you know, we have a thing in Uganda where you kneel to greet. Mm. Yeah. It's like a sign of respect in my tribe because I'm in Uganda. Yeah. Mm. So I'm all for kneeling for my dad, full stop. So I I, expe- I think this traditional man would just expect me to kneel, kneel for him, kneel for his friends, kneel for his village. Nil for everyone. So, no, I would pick a, a modern man. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. So, one, one of the questions that I had submitted by uh, S.Web, he's one of my mm-hmm. uh, channel members. Yeah. He asked, and I, and I think you touched on it earlier, but he asked, do you think black men have better options of women overseas? So when you're looking at African American women, like you know, on TV or people yeah. on YouTube talking about them, do mm. you view African women as an example as better women for men, or do you um, think about it differently? I, I I don't think I would use exact words and say better women for men. I would say the men have chances of getting what it is they want in Africa, you know. You want a more submissive girl. You just, listen, the girl just has to learn you. She just has to learn what you like, what you do, what you understand. And then she just adapts and adjusts and moves her life around to fit your schedule. You understand? Mm. So I feel, I do think, um, and you know, the man could do the bare minimum here and it will be, oh, he did this for me. He bought me a phone or he did this or he paid my rent. You know, such Things that could be considered bare minimum here, I'm gonna be like, oh my god, he's loving, he sends me money. That is, he's loving. Like, okay, okay, you understand? So I do think the men have black men have a chance, a higher chance of being with the type of women they want here. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So this this is typically my favorite question to ask because mm-hmm. this is how I can tell if you are full of shit if you're an honest person (laughs) right so if you woke up tomorrow Mm. and you were a man (laughs) all right describe to me in as much detail as you can 
the type of man you would be? Mm. First of all, if I woke up as a man, <laughs> the world would be a better place. <laughs> anyway, in, in great detail, I think I'll give you like five. I'm going to give you three, three qualities. I think I would be a very loving man. Because I think, d- does the knowledge of being a woman come with me when I transition to being the man? Sure, yeah. 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 So all that knowledge and everything that I know, I think I would be a very loving man. You know, I would be a family oriented man. I love family. I feel like, yeah, family is really, really important. You know, I'll be a family oriented man. And then I would also be a provider. I would be generous. I'd be, <laughs> I'd be <laughs> giving money to random people, or to random girls, you know, just, I'll be, I'll be so generous. I think I'll be a loving, family oriented, generous man. Yeah. Tell me some of the bad traits. What, what do you think some <laughs> of the some of the bad attributes that you would have? Mm, as a, if I was a man, I think I would not be a womanizer. That's for sure. Uh, the bad traits. Hmm. It's hard to think of bad things. Why, why wouldn't you be a, a womanizer if if you know how women think? Why wouldn't you exploit that? I feel like womanizing is a lot. It takes a lot. It, it 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 takes it needs a lot from you. It's but it's, you're a generous man. Yeah, but that doesn't mean <laughs> I have to sleep with everyone. But it's when, a lot. W- when you're generous, women will throw themselves at you. So no, are you telling know. me you will have and the fortitude, the, yes. the, the goal to I'll stand lead your them ground? To the lights. I'll tell them you need to save yourself, okay? Wow. Yes. I don't think I would be a womanizer, no, because womanizing, I've been around womanizers. Oh, trust me, I've been around them, and it's a lot. I don't know how they do it. It's a lot of energy emotionally. I was like, I don't like mixing myself with so many people because I feel like you, you know, it's like, you die, I don't know, you like, is it like tint? Maybe if your soul is white, it's, um, you dilute just it. speaking. Yeah, I know, like, you just have, like, Marks of that stains. somewhere. Gotcha. Yeah, stains of that. Yeah, you have stains of that. It's, it's like, just be you. Just deal with that. Maybe I'll deal with one or two. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> one or two. Or two. Okay. Uh, that's it. Two would be okay. my my maximum. And that would be we, 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 we'll, we'll come back to that. We have to have yeah. it. We'll come back to that. But yeah. tell me how the male version of you Mm. would be, other than obviously anatomy and biology, how would the male version of you be different from Mm. the female you? What traits do you want him Mm. to have that you don't have? Right. Ah, That's that's, that's some deep, deep uh, shit going on. Um, I think I'd like him to be more open to communication. Because I do struggle with that. I will take five days to reply to a message, but I've seen it. But you work in communication. That's that's, that, that's weird. No, because <laughs> because I have this. It's, I don't want to put my to put all my secrets out there. But if if I'm not get, getting paid to do something, the 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 joy of me jumping to do something is rare okay no that's bad that's bad that's bad let's edit that out <laughs> i'm not editing it out you told the no. truth keep going no, okay keep going. Com- my communication is bad that's it i'll see a message and then say oh i'll reply to it in my head i'll be like let me reply to it and then i'll get busy with something and completely forget about it so i think the thing i would want my male version to be is is good with communication you know like reply on time so now now it has come to a point where i have to like set reminders for myself to do things you know do you, do yeah. you think people prioritize things that they care about yeah 100 percent. i think they do so if somebody understood that as you maybe just don't care about the mm. guy or you don't mm. you don't prioritize companionship do you think that's a fair assessment or you think that's incorrect uh i do think no it's a fair no it's mm, I'm, I'm on the fence i'm on the fence because with me now that we're speaking personally with me i if i'm dating someone i 
the early stages, yeah, my communication is not the best. But like once we lock down and know like this is this is my boyfriend and we're in this together, then then my communication is a bit high. You understand? Because mm. like I know this is Going now somewhere. a commitment. Yeah, it's a commitment. So now I have to give it my full on attention. But sometimes I'll get a message from my sister who I love dearly, but then I'll forget to answer. You understand? Mm. To reply. So I don't think it's priorities. Mm. But yeah, maybe I'm the one with the problem. <laughs> <It's priorities. laughs> and I mean, the, um, the, the only reason I, I say that is, you know, yeah. as, as a man, my number one priority is my purpose. So mm. a lot of times, you know, I, I, I can deprioritize other things like women or like friends for mm. work. Right. And I, I think if, I met a woman who was the same way as me. I don't think we mm. would like <laughs> it would work exactly. Yeah. I don't think it would work. So, would you need a man who was less uh, focused on their work for no. for you and him to? Mm-mm. Okay. You need. I need a man who is focused. Uh, listen, if you have no ambition and no purpose, we can't. We can't. I can't even look at you twice. Mm. You're tech, you you turn into a brother. Tight. We are country. Yeah. We are country people at that point. Wow. I can't. I, I, <laughs> I like. A, I've heard of a friend zone, but yeah. country people. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yes, we are country people now. You're my compatriots. That's it. Because a man has to listen. You have to want your work more than you actually want me. I need to be second. Your work has to come first, and then let's I need to talk. Be let's let's talk about that because. A while back, do you know who Chloe Bailey is? Yeah, I do. Yeah, the musician. Yeah, she um, yeah. she did an interview and she said, "I don't want you mm. to pick up the phone every time I call." Mm. And a lot of dudes were like, "What? What the hell are you talking about? Like, mm-hmm. we? I thought you wanted us to like you and you wanted us to be yeah. interested in you and want to talk to you and, and, and the whole night." Now, mm. I interpreted that as she wants you to have a purpose that is mm. greater than you and greater than her and greater than anything else. Mm. Um, most women aren't yeah. going to admit that, right? So mm, yeah. explain that to the men. Help them understand mm. why you want to be second, not yeah. first. Because everything we hear is that the woman wants to be your priority. She wants you to mm-hmm. drop everything you're doing for her, this, this, and that. So explain what, what's the truth. Mm. Uh, I actually do um, support what Chloe Bailey said. I feel like at, she said everything that was right. I didn't understand the outrage. I was like, okay, this is what you people are doing. But a man, listen, a man needs something to focus on. You understand? I feel like the way men are wired, they need something to pour into. They need something to... I don't know, take up time and focus on. They need to have something that pushes them to wake up in the morning, you know, as a man. Because like you're not going to sit back on the couch and watch TV, are you? Every day of your life, I don't think you're going to do that. So I feel like a man needs to have a purpose, and he needs to be fully focused on that purpose. And as a woman, it should even be your your goal in life to make sure he's focused on his purpose and to make sure you you help him achieve whatever goals he has to achieve with that purpose. And a man who's readily available is not that attractive, I think, anymore. I, anymore? Okay. What do you okay, mean? Okay. Break it I down like for me. Break it down. Before, before women be like, oh, you need to be there whenever I call you and whatnot. But now it's just like, no, I need to know you're busy with something. I'd like to know my, my man is accessible. Like, if I'm in trouble... I can get to you, you understand? It's not that hard to get to you. But I need to know you're doing something. I need to know you're out there hustling, you know? I need to know your routine, actually. <laughs> I need to know you're doing something. <laughs> you know, you're not every time you're, you're, oh, I'm sending a message and then you're replying immediately. Don't you have work? <laughs> Don't you, sure. Aren't you doing something that should be taking up your time, you know? And now women are also working. So it's not like we both have free time to keep going back and forth 24-7. You understand? Mm. So let's all do our thing. And then at the end of the day, we'll wind down and talk about our days and whatnot. You know? And I like, I'm, I like a man with like, a, like a, a man who says, I want to leave this behind. I want people to know me for this. You know, I want mm. 
to have a legacy. I want to be remembered for this. I think that's the ultimate, uh, yeah, Turn trait. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so in, in, in the spirit of that, what do you think? Because when I asked you what kind of man you would be, mm. I, I, I was trying to get more at like, what do you think are some mistakes that men are mm. making? Because a lot of times, you know, women will complain about men mm. need to be more like dot, dot, dot. Men need to be yeah. more of dot, dot, dot. So I'm like putting um. yourself in those shoes. Like, so mm. what type of man would you be? AKA, what do you think men are missing, doing wrong, mm. um, neglecting? I think I think men are neglecting the fact that mm-hmm, I think the fact that women need them to be faithful, I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah. I feel like some men want to step outside once in a while. <laughs> that's what in Africa that's called cheating. They don't call it cheating because it's not that bad and it doesn't warrant you leaving the man. It's just that oh he just stepped outside for a little while and then he came back in the house you know but yeah I think that's it I think that's the one thing that if men could work on that if you could be faithful to one girl then you definitely should because you don't know the trauma that comes with you stepping out yeah do, do you think and may, maybe you would have an interesting perspective on this because mm-hmm. like you said in our culture it's not a, as big of a deal right yeah um, do you think men are predisposed to be wired to be monogamous? Mm. Do you think that's natural mm. to us, or do you think it it, it requires discipline? Uh, I don't think it's natural to men. Um, you know, I think one of the ones men men need sex. Like that's number one. You can't take that away. It's how God wired it. It's how science wired it. It's how it's made. That's what I've understood on my end. So they need it. So they will get it. You understand? They will find it. They will look for it. Mm. They will run for it. They will search for it. So they will still get it, yeah? So I think, I don't think they're wired to be monogamous. I think it takes discipline. It takes knowing what you want. It takes knowing that you don't want to hurt the person you're with to, to step out. Before I was, I was so against cheating. Like I was the biggest advocate. I would sing about it, but mm. now I understand it. You know, I understand the cheating. So explain it. Explain it uh, to the women who haven't. <laughs> they haven't reached that that state. Explain it uh, to the younger version of yourself. The way that uh, you understand. Oh it. yeah, I think I would tell my younger version. People have needs. Sometimes when those needs are not met, as stupid as it sounds, I know young me would be like, but no, 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 no. No. As stupid as it sounds, people have needs and those needs need to be met. And then sometimes people fall, people are in a relationship, but they're out of love, but in the relationship. So they may fall in love outside the relationship. You know, they may mm-hmm. fall in love outside the relationship. So what are you going to do? He's in the relationship, but he's not in love with the relationship. Yeah. You know, so he yeah. finds someone and he's in love and that person makes him happy. So what, are you, what, what, what there's nothing you can do about that because the heart wants what it wants. And in that particular moment and phase, maybe he wants to step out. If he had the discipline and whatnot, he could bring it up to, I actually advocate talking to your girlfriend and telling her there's this person, I actually have a crush on, like better talk about it and then like work on it then pretend like it doesn't exist. Because some, one person can't be in love with you forever. They can't. People so, keep... so, so do you think it's a love issue? Like the reason the man wants to sleep with another woman is because he doesn't love you anymore? No, I don't think it's a love issue. I think it's just a need issue. There's a need that needs to be fulfilled in that moment in time. Do women have that same need? Yeah, but women don't publicize it. Women don't leave clues that they've cheated. Women are very, very good cheaters. You'll never so, find out. So so what, what you're saying is women um, are just as... So you're saying cheating is natural to women as well? It's not natural, but it does happen. 
it it happens like i said listen you can't you can't be on top of everything unless you you really need that's why it's it's better for people to be more intentional and pour into each other you need to be more intentional and like keep fixing the leaks you know keep fixing the leaks whenever they come up or keep working towards being whole as two individuals so with women it's not natural it's it just it does happen you know but women women are not forgiven as men for the cheating mm-hmm. it's very unfair but that's life so that's why some women will cheat and then they'll keep quiet about it and that i also understand well i mean that that's part of the and this is why I like you know having mm-hmm. conversations with women because you guys will give me additional insight because mm-hmm. the idea is that wanting more wanting variety is natural to men mm-hmm. but it's not necessarily natural to women and that's part of the reason why it hurts more when a woman mm-hmm. cheats on you right yeah. so so is is it is it true that women as far as like sexual variety women mm-hmm. have the same type of need that men have for mm-hmm. variety for different women women also want different men. Is that true or is that false? Mm, I think that's true, but I think the experience that during that dating life, because no one has one boyfriend unless they were celibate the whole time till marriage, which is very rare, by the way. So she has dated multiple people and she has slept with multiple people. Just that women be like, the number is three, no matter what. <laughs> you don't go below, you don't go above it, it's three, you're done, that's it. You, you have to sing it. I remember the number will always be three. <laughs> That's it. You know? So they've dated multiple people and they've tried, like, they've slept with all those men and they, like, know each man, what each man brought, you know, sexually. So I think by the time she settles down, she has had a test of different men. Well, she won't let the man know. Hmm. But the main thing is, do you, do you think women want as much variety as men? Oh, do, do I think they want as much? As much variety as men. I think there's a phase where women want variety and then it it ends. Why? Because it's just like an itch. You scratch it and it's gone. That's well, that's is it a, is it an itch for because part of the conversation I have with mm. men is that, you know, men typically are not at least in my conversations, they're not looking for the perfect woman. Because even mm. if they find the perfect woman, and another woman walks by, we're, we're kind of like dogs. We'll look, oh, man, it's another yeah. woman. Whereas for <laughs> women, if you get the perfect guy, for mm-hmm. most women, other men don't even exist to you. True. You understand what True. I'm saying? So it, yeah. it almost seems more like women aren't as hungry for variety in the way that men are. Are you saying that that's not the case? Uh, no, 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 that is the case, but... It's uh, life is not black and white. That some exceptional things, you know, like it's it's supposed to be the the way you said it is perfect. That's how it should be, but sometimes that's not how it is. Like sometimes women want to, you know, sleep around or test different men so they can commit to one man, you know. And when they like you said, when they find the perfect guy, they stop looking. That's true. But I'm sure she has looked around. When she was looking, she wasn't just sitting and smiling, you know? Okay. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think, you know, from the outside looking in, when mm. you see black men and black women overseas mm. having this conflict, you know, this, mm. this debate, this uh, turmoil, I guess, what do you mm. think is going on? If, if mm. you know, if, if somebody flew you in as a therapist and you had to break it down <laughs> from a, an African Ugandan perspective, what do you yeah. see that is actually happening? Mm, first off, when I see that, I feel like uh, men that side have a lot of time on their hands. <laughs> mm. It's just a lot of time. <laughs> you should be working. What are you doing, going back and forth uh, with me with women on such topics? I know my thinking can be. So African and shrewd in a way. But yeah, that's what I think when I first see them. I'm just like, yeah, this is a waste of time because we are never going to agree. They'll never agree. You know, you can sing about it all you want, but they'll never. I don't think they may agree on some things, but I don't think it will ever come to like a standstill. Like, oh, finally, the women are these and the women are that, just like how the other parties wanted. You know, mm. it's just an ongoing. It's just an 
a never ending discussion. I don't think it will ever end. It's going nowhere. It's getting no one anywhere. It doesn't help because people already have the, the, the opinions, you know, their minds are already made up. You're not going to change a whole grown up. You're not going to change a grown man or a grown woman. You're not going to do anything. They're just going to listen to you, reply, listen, reply. And say, That's it. You're just wasting time. So, you know, for me, I'm a, I think of myself as like a scientist, a hacker. So I'm always interested in like if 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 you could give men a cheat code or mm. some cheat codes for women, whether it's something that we can use to understand mm. women better, or something we can use to, mm. you know, even <laughs> manipulate, mm. I guess. Let's mm. put it like that. Yeah. What what is some insight that you can give men? Uh just show up in just you just show up the communication in other all areas of her life you know you just show up you know a little support here and there you just show up you just need to show her that you know what i am here use me how you want i'm there for you that's it you just show up hmm. that's that's it okay vice yeah. versa if you can give women advice to better uh, understand men or to better hack men what would your advice yeah. be I would be, be more empathetic. I feel like as women, we are not the most understanding. We are, it's always, oh, men, serve me, protect me, do this me. I just like, you have to sometimes see it from a male perspective because I used to be that men serve me, do what? Then I started working with men and it, it was a whole different thing. I'm like, this is what you people go through behind the scenes. Like, why why doesn't everyone know about this? Like you should be advocating for this or something like that. So it would be be more empathetic, be more understanding, you know. But not too understanding to be a clown. But you know, be more understanding, be more empathetic towards the man. So do do you plan on having children? Do I? No, yes. I don't. Okay. Yeah. Hypothetically, if mm. you did have a son. Hmm. What type of son would you want to raise? Uh, I think, well, I'm raising my little brother anyway. So Okay, so talk I'm about putting, what kind of man you want him to be. <laughs> I, I want him to be a respectful, loving man. Like respect has so many things under it. I want him to be so respectful because he's now an, a, a teenager. And I'm seeing so many things I don't like. So I'm trying to correct so many things before he goes. He, uh, he becomes a grown man, but I think it's just be res a respectful, loving man, like respect, you know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's it. That's yeah. all I have for you. This was Thank fantastic. You. This was Thank fantastic. You so much.